So, um, is anyone here not paid for the top world bank yet? What? What's that? What is that? Okay. Is it in D and D? Yeah. They, and um, we did sort of, but we didn't uh, do dice. We just had a person in our group who's a really good writer, and she creates stories, and then we just. Uh, Okay, so that's oh, closer to something else. So anyway, um, yes. Okay. Okay. Tabletop role playing games. Uh, basically, it's like improvisational theater with dice. So you have someone who writes the story, and then you have people in the other people who take on roles of characters, and they basically tell the story with the object master, the game master, storyteller, you know, several different words of the same thing. So the idea is that collectively we create a story. So it's, you know, as I said, like improvisational theater with dice and a few other things, but yes, improvisational theater with dice. Um, there are various different game systems. I'm going to be talking about Pathfinder today and might be mentioned in D&D a bit when I slip up. There are other systems that are either more rules intensive, like say GURPS, that I'll never play, or more rules light. Yes, what are you question. talking about? Tabletop games. I love go goats. <laughs> no, not really. Goats? Goats. It's a generic system. Generic universal role-playing system. Whatever I, that means. I did not intend or expect someone to know what they're exploiting the book. Really? Okay. Well, you haven't been drinking with Steve Jackson before? Sorry? You haven't gone drinking with Steve Jackson? No. Ooh, ooh. No, I, I, I saw problem. no one so I didn't you know, expect it. <laughs> ooh, wouldn't have showed up otherwise, had not complained to know what I was talking about. So yes, there are systems like GURPS that are more rules heavy and there are systems like Wraith and Hunter and... Oh, I remember Wraith. Isn't that something about... Which one? I'm going to have to be talking about No, 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 the questions are good. No, what's Wraith? It's, uh, it's a role-playing game, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, okay. yes. And we played... Yes. So okay, very good. So then you're you're familiar with. And I think going. Right. <laughs> they were geeks. And was, but well, okay. yeah, a lot of White Wolf's titles fit in well with the goth subculture. Wraith yeah. probably best because you play someone who's dead. Oh yeah. We didn't Not even that. just wishing to be dead. In Wraith, you get to play someone who is actually dead. <laughs> but we didn't get to play that one. But or we didn't play. That. It's psychological and dark. I'm up here talking about good that I wrote to run a game. Okay. So I think that outdoors anyone. Um, so yes, there are different kinds of game systems. I'll be talking about Pathfinder today. And so one of the things you do in a role playing game is there are combats to run, of course. Because that's one of the ways you resolve disagreements in a fantasy role playing society when the talking fails, or when your group doesn't decide that they want to talk and that they want to kill everything they see. Which seems to happen more than that, like, concerning a story or in a person. But anyway, um, so yes, we have combats. So, one of the things that a game master needs to do when they're running combats is keep track of who goes when, keep track of what status is affecting who, keep track of whether someone is in the combat or out of the combat, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So, we have this. So, let's, uh, yes, let's take some of the uh, What's this about? This is about tabletop role playing games on Pro. Oh, cool. Yes. Not uh, board games, but specifically role playing games like D and D, Pathfinder, Wraith, Hunter, Shadowrun, Traveler, etc. Yes, yes. You were long for Yes. So, so. Give me some names for uh, people to play in our game today. So what? Any names for people to play in our game today? Character names. Give you some names. Oh, we can just use our, our IRC handles. Yes, yes. I will. Gary, right? Yeah. Gary, right? Initiative bonus. But your actual name is. Brenna. Brenna. Yeah. I keep trying to not call you yes. Brenna. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably really, really bad because 
Oh, Isn't it no. names and in the day are uh, usually feminine? Well, I friend no. I will not do <laughs> well, that. Gary. Yes, we will. Okay, I want to be. Um, Some creative name. Rainbow, super awesome, cool. No, no, rainbow. Super, it's done. It's done. No, do rainbow, it, do super. It. Do it. Unicorn. Rainbow unicorn. Rainbow unicorn. Rainbow unicorn. Rainbow unicorn. Watermelon. Oh. Do I get a higher number because I have oh. such a cool name? I'm just going in increasing order. Mm -hmm. No, well, I want the highest number. Well, you get the highest number because I'm going to the NPCs. Are we going to play a game? Yes. Yay! Sort of. This is a cool <laughs> talk. Sort of. Would you like to play a game? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a really loaded question at this conference <clears throat> because there was that video last night. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to be going up against Orchids because I'm a bass with the app. Uh, can I see that on the app? Uh, That's okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> we, we promise not to report you to the FCC. Okay, good. We're post watershed. Cops from motherfucker tits. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I like your I, I tell you I'm feeling last week. really hmm? dirty. I tell you saw yeah. Sherlock last week. <laughs> well, I, I, I really uh, like No, but I watched you with that class off the top of the you hear about George Crowley. Mm -hmm. I have uh, both episodes on oh, the USB. Right. Uh, I, 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 I must say, I'm all versus Okay. So, yeah, I'm not a fan. Okay, so, Orcus, the Lord of the Undead, is going to be acting someone, because that is what he does. So he decides that this smart ass named Acheron is, is giving him trouble. So he decides that he wants to. Attack after one, he manages to kill him. So we do this. Yes. What? Oh, yes. Okay, so now Yay. the, the after one person has been killed. I want oh. I want to do uh, I wanna give everybody uh, um glitter glitter everything. Okay, okay. yes, yes. Yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's plus one. Okay. <laughs> well, it's Rainbow uh, Unicorn. You, you have to glitter people if your name is Rainbow Unicorn. Yes. Um, uh, interestingly, oh, there is shiny. an actual ability like that. that is yes. <laughs> what? Um, What's the, the got zero thing? <laughs> um, I thought it was a dice roll. No, that's... No, don't um, me with glitter. Oh, no, it, it, I thought Which made no sense it's because it's oh, zero. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you tell me. Well, I don't know if having glitter everywhere is good or bad. I mean, in, in the game sense, it would be bad, but I thought you, the way you phrased it would be a good thing. But anyway, okay. um, the got zero thing is debugging that I forgot to take out. Okay. Because I was working on a good, you know, today. Uh, last yeah. Night. yeah, I can relate to that, yeah. This morning and last night. So, um, now, uh, Rainbow Unicorn Falling is done. Falling off of Orcus's turn. So is that, it that's that's more debugging. Yet. Oh. That's more debugging. I will get to, well, there's technical details of why it says that. Yeah, but we're all busy people. Right, it's, <laughs> it's debugging info for me. Yes, because I was working with these. But you're not in the game now because you weren't here to come up with a cool name. Yeah, so. It's so whatever, I can launch. You can be the, the Lord of the Undead. Done. <laughs> there you go. Sold. <laughs> so, but yes. I have rainbow glitter power, so. I am. Glitter power. You have an aura 20 of 20 damage each. Yes. Sold. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can get into more technical details, but yes. Okay. So, um, what happened to everybody? Hmm? What happened to everybody? Um, okay, so your turn is done. Now it's now Gary's turn. And. So there's good. no, like, you just could There's no. Well, what, I'm, what this <laughs> does is. It's made to track status of players in the game. It's not meant to run oh, the game. Oh, okay. Always. So you just, while everyone's playing, then the, the person who runs it can type some things in. Yes. So what if glitter had like a lasting penalty or something? Like, I don't know, it's glitter got in your bad. eyes and like. It's not going <laughs> to automatically be Okay. I'm specifically designing this to not replace the dungeon master. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the idea is that this will 
make it easier for the dungeon master to keep in his head or her head what's going on in the combat. Say if you have ten combatants mm -hmm. and they all have different status effect abilities, they all have different statuses, positions, of whatever, all that good stuff. You want to make sure that as you're going around the table, keep taking the player's actions, taking your actions, that you know who goes next and that kind of thing. Uh, I have this tendency of skipping a certain player in my game <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And they okay. get very upset when that happens for some reason. Yes? She has a point though, but because uh, all the games that I've played, uh, whenever a player has a bow and arrow, mm -hmm. it really sucks keeping count of the arrows. You know, that's the player shot. That's what? That's the player shot. Yeah, but or, or will will or the we could just say forget it and don't worry about it. Oh, okay. it's, it's it's just ministry of minutia. So, yeah. so yeah, this is like the encumbrance rules. So this. Yeah, well, but some, some players, some dungeon masters do care about this stuff, you know, like, you're out of arrows, you can't shoot anymore. Well, right. The orc will kill you. That's not something the dungeon master typically takes care of. That's something that the, the DM can trust the player well, to take care of. Mm. Honor system. If you're cheating at D&D, you have no life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Question. So, so, then, the point behind this, like, affected by glitter thing, for example, is not necessarily to keep track of how much damage the glitter is inflicting per turn, but or just that glitter is an active Right. Thing. Okay. It's just for reminding the player. So when it's the like, by the way, your glitter... But that's cool, because you're you forget. Like, if it mm -hmm. only... If it yeah. lasts for four... If it lasts for, like, ten turns, mm -hmm. you get five turns, and you're like, what? What was that again? How long was that? And you're like, it's really neat. Feature request. Did I yeah. get that? No, I didn't mean to. No, that's kind of what we were talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's going to be difficult, though. Well, no, okay. no, you could just look back at it and say, oh, that was five turns ago. Well, if you're, if I have, say, ten combatants instead of five, mm -hmm. and they're scrolling the screen a lot, you're going to have to scroll up me. So, I need to... Could you timestamp everything? Well, no, what I'm going to do is take another parameter to the status method that says this lasts X turns, and then decrement it every turn. Okay. Thank you. Feature request. Okay, so now we have this. How do you use it? Hmm? <laughs> Terrorists. What? Terrorists. Fox News said during Obama's campaign that doing the fist bump is something the terrorists do. Terrorists are a special world too. <laughs> they also call a fist bump. Wow. <laughs> they did no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like this anymore. Okay. Okay, so now we I can't leave you hanging. And Garrow decides. Terrorists to always have the same fingers? Well, my turn. Yes. The, the thing killed my glittered friend. Yes. So I'm going to resurrect you. Okay, so that would be. No, you killed the glittered friend. No, 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 no. no, no. Work is killed after him, because that's what he does. You killed yourself. The DM. Well, uh, let's just say that after Ryan is someone in the That's game, right. I'm running the game. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so you're going to revive after mm -hmm. Ryan, and that's just. I thought you were going to avoid. Okay, and now I'm mm -hmm. back up because you revived. Is she the revived person? Or no, 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 no. no. She's she? playing the Lord of the Undead. Which one is that one? The, the one that killed him. Morpheus. All right. Then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, see, she has the laugh for it. Yes. Okay. So, um, and he's not even playing. No. Well, what? I'm observing. Are we too geeky for you? No, I'm just catching up on you now. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I let it go, if I let it go for more than five minutes, I, uh, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, but I suggest filters. Yeah, it hasn't worked so well either. See, you're you're, you're not filtering everything. Well, I'm filtering quite a bit. You need to filter everything. Those are all the things. Does anybody watch Big Bang Theory here? Yes. Too close to home. I feel like we've got a shelter. <laughs> Don't you? Because mm -hmm. you said I appreciate the honesty. Mm -hmm. Sheldon would say. And I appreciate the pretense. Pretense? Of, of whatever it is you pretend to do for him. Be his friend of the door. Oh. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Aperon is going to be playing with Wizards because Aperon really, really, really likes Wizards. So what he's going to do is... go to Wizards. Orbis. 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 
So now we have four kids with respect to that one, so that for that, that, that. So then, you know, done. And then eventually we eliminate Orcus. Yay, done. Now. Can I eliminate Orcus with glitter? Um, now yes, yes. But the way this is set up is that it doesn't track the specifics of how the players do this. You're it's only, only tracking actions. Who goes when and what, who's affected by what. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise... Oh, I'm dead. If I got it correctly, he, he, she could have uh, killed the, the Orcus uh, with glitter. I mean, well, because, was, because oh. the Orcus was inflicted by, by glitter. No, 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 no. I, I interpreted that as something positive to do on the party members. Well, well he's right. But I did make it positive. No, but the, the, like uh, when you give uh, health to an undead, mm -hmm. That it hurts him? Yeah, 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 let's let's leave the particulars in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we're going to do something, you ask for. Tell me where the last. You ask for a role Tell playing crowd. Care Bear Stare. Care Bear Stare. Oh, you're right. Care Bear Stare. Okay, oh. okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was it, please? It's on video. What was it? <laughs> oh. We just hit rewind, you know. What did you just say? I, I, I said, oh. I can't understand. It's too. Rainbow Oh, okay. I, I was thinking Calamari. Yeah. The peaking rainbow bridge. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Do you play Calamari? You need to play. Yes, you need to play. Okay. So that is. Is it that big? That is more or less the non-technical section of the talk, <laughs> I'm afraid, and so having gone over what this can do so far, I think it will be educational initiative for us to look at how the code works, and I can understand if certain non-technical people in the audience are going to just run off and do whatever, because this is a very technical section, so, okay. right so code. Yeah, that is code. Too far. Okay, so here we have some stuff, some code. The really only really interesting thing is uh, two things. We create the combat runner object. We use the Pathfinder rule set because Pathfinder is awesome. We pass this FSA state attribute, which we'll get to soon. Then we add combatants. Interesting thing here is that if you enter an empty name, it stops taking events. So here is where I got the information for your name, your initiative bonus, and all that kind of thing. That needs to be refactored, now that I think of it. Um, so then we run the combat, and so we have Combat Runner. This is a generic class that takes an object that handles the run combat mode. And then we have more delegation via Moose with this combat runner doing the combat role. The default is the Pathfinder combat runner. So then this is the combat itself. Then we free into combat here. So to use it, you do need to have technical skills. I'm currently. Well, it's still in an early stage of development. And what I just showed you was just typing some stuff into a uh, text console, which I think is easy enough. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just going over the particulars of how it works. If you want to customize it somehow, you would need technical skills presently. I guess I'm just thinking about the application and how you would sell it or figure out how to you know, get other people to use it and monetize mm -hmm. it somehow. Because right, I think it's are, something you could monetize. There are, there's a lot of competition that would need to make it prettier first. Oh, are there other programs? Yeah, 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 but this is very unix and not based on the web front end. It runs on a Mac. <laughs> All yeah. the other software is either web-based or for D&D or, you know, not suited to the requirements that I have here. It's a lot more... Uh, Right. Yeah, this is, this is more in line with something that I would use myself, which is why I built it. Of course. Right. That's why most people Yep. 
So we create the combat runner, create the goal sets, add the combatants, combatants are defined here. We have, you know, name, initiative bonus, whatever they're proceeding on, whether they active in the combat, their initiative, their, whether they're active in, whether they're in the combat lane. Or gets eliminated me, I will. Or gets eliminated after I set after on to the code sets after on to not active. So in other words, his turn doesn't go in that round, which is why it skipped him. Uh, we have a status, which is a hash ref. And we start um, adding the status is it takes the this is the name of the ailment and the source. Because in some game systems like the Andy War Game Edition, there's a concept called marking whereby a defensive character will entice an enemy to attack them, such that you need to know who is doing that to you when your turn comes. And then removing it is just leaving it with a hash ref, you know, simple stuff. And uh, here's some miscellaneous ability stuff, you know, making sure all the initiatives are in the right order, getting the next combat for the combat, of, uh, you know, simple stuff. And here is the real meat of the code. This is the Pathfinder specific combat runner. And here is where we get into something called FSA Engine, which is a finite state tom-tom in Pro for use. Anyone not familiar with the finance state of who is interested in knowing what it is? Okay. Um, right. I kind of know what they are, but I'm interested in the description of that in, some, in that one in particular. Sorry? I kind of know what the finance state of the is, but I'm interested in that one in particular, because I haven't heard of it. Okay, so basically what it is, is a, is a moose roll, as you can see here, that adds some methods and attributes well, has, has, has some requirements for attributes on your class. So it has a requirement for FSA state, FSA transitions, and then we build the states here, and the transitions here. So what we want to do here is define all the different ways you can move from one state of combat to another. So say, for example, you're at the end of, of the round, and you want to make sure that all the conditions for that are satisfied. So you pass it a hash ref of hashes, of more hashes. <laughs> many, many, many hashes. Hash all the things. So we have uh, name states here, and then we transition using the FSA uh, engine transition class. And what we do here is pass a bunch of names for states we can transition to. And you pass the transition object itself, three attributes, the test, the action, and the state. The test and the action are code refs, and what that means is these, the test is the code that is run to determine whether, it, whether the engine needs to transition to that state. So here we're making sure you know everyone who is active has gone, or making sure that you know, people are haven't acted for a new round, that kind of thing. The action is what we want to do to advance the state engine to the next state. For round, you know, for example, uh, if we go to the next round, we want to make sure that everyone has acted who is active from all the combatants uh, for the next action. And actually for that, we increment the round counter so that we can track how many rounds have gone if there's a timer on some kind of creature in the combat doing something on a specific round number. We have that information. And then we set everyone's has acted to zero such that when we go to the turn of the first turn of the round, we get the make sure that no one has acted, and then we get the first combatant who is active, make them act, go on, go on, go on. It's, it's really very boring to go through, now that I've actually written the code for it, it's really, really basic stuff when you see it presented to you, at least in my opinion, so it's really dirt simple. Uh, here is the running combat method, which basically gets the combatants from the calling code, gets the initiative through players, and then checks the state a few times. Uh, this code here, the uh, check state call, FSA check state call, you would typically put this in a loop, 
with some kind of breaking condition such that if a condition of some sort is met, he would not run the state with further. For example, for this, if I had time to get to it, it would say something like if either all the active piece, all the active combatants are PCs, or if all the active combatants are NPCs, meaning either party one or the enemy's one, then the combat's done. That kind of thing. This is uh, running turn. There is some uh, command processing that you saw earlier. And so this is where you saw the dot zero four. Message, yeah. That's the debugging that I left in. Uh, using given when here, this is a quick ad hoc parser. I admit that it's not the best. But when you're running it a couple days before giving the talk, it seems like something simple, quick enough to get the job done at the time. And I didn't want to mess with parse par rec descent or, or marker or anything like that because it's simple enough for this. So we have various different things, you know, um, eliminate, revive, we saw, inflict, we saw. We didn't get to use overcome, which removes a st uh, status from a combatant. Uh, and like later? Yeah, you, know, you would use revive when you affect more off, for example. Right. Right. Uh, and there's an error handling case here where if you enter something, like I entered before, with no line, or if it doesn't recognize it, it says, I don't know what to do with this. And here is the following off turn thing, which is more debugging. So, right. Right, so I believe that is pretty much it. Ran a little quicker than I thought. There's you know, some more utility stuff here. Getting the combatants in order. This is the generic combat class. There's a method to order the combatants in terms of their initiatives. So you make sure people are acting in order. There's a method for getting the next combatant for when you go to the next turn. Uh, there's a method for the first combatant, which you know, it's, it's really basic stuff. And then there's this method here, which is collecting the initiatives, which basically is what you do when the DM says, roll initiative, and then everyone rolls their die, and then you get their, their numbers here. So we're leaving it up to the player, in this case, to add their initiative bonus to their initiative when they give it to you. This is more in line with the minimalist approach that I'm doing here, such that I don't want to leave the game up for a program, and I want to involve the DM, sort of the game master, etc., as much as possible without making them obsolete. And a couple of quick comments on the architecture. The general design that I've been trying to accomplish here, and it does need some refactoring, is that there are different world systems supported, and there are you can, in the calling code, construct your rule set, construct your combat runner, etc., to be of different classes that implement the rule sets that you're using. For example, I chose Pathfinder because it's what I'm running right now. I could have chosen D&D War Games Edition, could have chosen Wraith, could have chosen D&D Basic, which is really interesting in some boring ways that are not boring if you're a gamer. But anyway, um, it's important that these be split up by the rule sets such that if, say, for example, initiative is determined by side rather than by player, like in game basic, thank you, RKBS, you need different to handle that. Or if you have these things called action points, like the D War Game Edition, you need to be able to handle those as well. So that's why I split out the rule sets. Yes? When you say D&D War Game Edition, are you talking about D&D 4? Is that something Yes. Different? Okay, so you're being snide. I, I agree, I don't like it either. <laughs> just a touch. <laughs> yes, just a touch. So um, I'm glad you picked up on that, because I haven't specified it yet. So yes, there are important differences that need to be codified into the rule sets. And... The only thing that I really haven't factored out yet, that I probably should, is the actual combatant class. Because you see here that it's not particular to any rule sets, but it's really important that it is, because you need to track things like action points, as I said, or, if, for example, in Wraith, you have, uh, uh, what is it? I just want to be careful. 
you have pathos and, and corpus and angst and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, things that don't play into Pathfinder, but that do play into other games. So there are a couple things we can do here. For example, Pathfinder, or excuse me, Wraith as a White Wolf game has some attributes that are shared among other White Wolf games. So for example, you could get some inheritance involved in terms of building your combatant class, which is something I want to look at further. Right, I believe that covers more or less everything. Do we have? Yes. Can you write a new players in between the combat? In the middle of the combat? Can you write, add new players? That's something I need to add. Like an NPC? You know? Yeah, that's something I need to add. It's still very early. Because all of a sudden, a, a dragon always appears. You know? Right, of course. <laughs> of course. And it's always an ancient black dragon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> As a DM, do you think that it's necessarily an evil action for a druid to go into the manufacture of drugs in Pathfinder? Depends upon his or her ultimate goal. Okay. To sell them to people that want them, not children, though. I'm aware that selling drugs to children would probably be evil in Pathfinder. Yeah, but it's a really good money maker. I'm not sure why it's such a bad thing. Insofar as his actions are aligned with his or her god, and insofar as these drugs do not disrupt the natural order, no, I do not believe it is evil. Uh, you know, because you know, Pathfinder has a drug system of addiction. Yeah, it's, it's quite Yes, cool. I know. Okay. Just checking. I think my DM for, forbid my druid from doing that, otherwise he changes alignment to evil and I will you know, be druid stuff anymore. Oh, come on. For what action? Well, I also sort of bur burn, burned down an orphanage. But that was completely... <laughs> <laughs> no. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, sort of. It was abandoned. <laughs> abandoned of... And you were very cold. I'm just, I'm just trying to think in what world uh, burning an orphanage down doesn't tip you towards the evil alignment. Well, it, it was an orphanage for it was infested with gremlins at the time. Gremlins or goblins? Gremlins. The grem gremlins things that like make things break. Okay, those guys. Maybe we should clap really loud too, just to show them. That. For those who are interested, this code is on uh, GitHub. It is actually on GitHub under my uh, app and account if you want to play with it. Um, I could use some assistance in making the design not suck. Um, also, I am very interested in rule sets for people using other game systems. Because while I know a good number, there are thousands of systems out there, and I can't possibly know them all or recode for them all. So that would be greatly appreciated. Well, you can just get the good ones like uh, D&D 3.5 and mm -hmm. Pathfinder. That's it. Is there a way to make it no. so other people can add their own features? Two point seven five. Well, right. Is that hard? Because you have to program them and stuff. Well, yeah, you do need to program them. Mm -hmm. So, if you can do that, you can add. I'm new sorry, features. that was really lame. If you can program, you can add new features. But it would be interesting to try to explore writing rule sets in something not a programming language. For example, it's interesting that you brought that up because. There are games like Nethack and Mori and Angman and Zangman, etc. That. Sorry? Sorry, I was cheering quietly. For which? Um, Nethack and Zangman. Okay, very good. <laughs> so those kinds of games take their rules kind of sort of from text files okay. that are not computer code on disk. So you can do different things with them by way of writing plain text files that are not code. And then put them in and mm -hmm. they create the code? Well, it, they can influence the way the game works in more or less ways, it depends. So there's I'm that. sure I just asked you the same question people ask me when they take their very first five in class. I want to make a mace. And I said, we can try. <laughs> Let's start with a bowl. A bowl is just a vase with less stuff, right? Uh, yeah, well, usually at the end, it's, it's a bowl with no bottom, and one side's really high, and the other side's really low. <laughs> this shows what I know. <laughs> And See, you know, you know a lot more about pottery. Well, yeah, but I think I'm, I'm just, I feel like maybe I asked you if I could make a vase. Can you just make a vase? <laughs> the code doesn't support it yet. Maybe, <laughs> we can try. maybe in the there future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I asked you that question. Yeah, future request. More formally for this crowd, um, will this, how will this be doing right into the, into the basic framework? Sorry? 
how easy would this be to integrate into the bot, basic bot framework for IRC? It would require completely re rewriting the rules engine because it currently uses an FSA. I don't think, well, FSA is not work out pretty well. Mm -hmm. It would be, you would need to rip out the input and output code mm -hmm. to interface with the bot. But yeah, that would be interesting. Okay, well, the bot framework, turning turn this into even more mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you would communicate with you communicate with the bot, and that becomes a uh, proxy for the VM. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I can see how that would work, but as I said, you need to rip out the I.O. Mm -hmm. to go over IRC, but the rest of it is not event-based. So there's no events happening, which okay. would mean that it's very amenable to putting it to IRC. Okay, so it's more of a, it's more of a stable set. Oh no, there is state. Well, well I, 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 I'm sorry, the, the communication. The communication is stateless, yes. Okay. Right, presently it's stateless. Although some more complex things in different rule sets might make it stateful. Currently, if you want to put the condition on someone, you type that all in one line with the name and the and the source and the verb and okay. Which is kind of unfriendly. Mm -hmm. But when I'm writing the, the code at 10 o'clock, in the morning today. <laughs> I want something, yeah, I want something that, quick that, that, that works. Yeah, I want right. something that works. Yeah, I, I completely understand. I just, it, it, it's just for this crowd. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah. I'm also thinking here of the game that um, Rick is running with uh, Nick right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you think? No, 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 it's coffee. <laughs> okay, no, it's coffee. coffee. It's cold. It's cold and it's Starbucks style. Mm -hmm. Should we get you some I'm okay. I'm okay. Sure? I'm positive. Yes, um, I'm much aware of the game that Rick is running, but I did show this to him and he said he'll take a look, he'll uh, keep an eye on it. So okay. I want to you know, make sure that this is growing up, and I need to book my players by coming back into our game because we pause for the holidays because people evidently like to have holidays. <laughs> what? Not Unbelievable. Just with lots of children and lots of grandchildren. How old are you? I, I don't know this word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been a kind for a few years, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, question? Uh, question? Um, what was the question? I remember my question. Uh, statement? Statement. Uh, well, I did find a use for D&D um, uh, War... What did you say? Uh, D&D War Game Edition. War Game Edition, yes. Uh, there's a use for that, and I found that it's uh, introducing an eight-year-old to D&D. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it works fairly well. <laughs> they have um, no attention span, so yes. They <laughs> <laughs> pay no attention to what? They have no attention span, so yes. Yes, it does. Well, no, I mean, it has attention span, but anyway, uh, it, it seems very useful for that. Well, yes, it is, you know, easy mode, so it makes sense. It's fighting mode, really. I mean. And it's a board game, glorified, really. Yeah. You can't, I mean, seriously, in D&D 4, you couldn't, told, you couldn't even contemplate not beating the game by fighting, but instead just making drugs and, and creating an empire <laughs> of informants and, and, and winning that way. I really Don't like forget burning the, the orphanages. Yes. Really it's not my fault that then Pathfinder druids, like, at, at like third and fourth level, just start getting fire spells up the wazoo. Well, no. It's yeah. just more Monte Cook. Okay, yeah, when they go off, how's the spell go off accidentally, may I ask? What? Okay, so we're we're clearing out of this. Sorry, this oh, ma it's actually I'm a monastery. Fine. It was a monastery slash orphanage. It was actually called the YMCA, <laughs> and we were testing it. And there was apparently a, a uh, conjuration boat spell in this in this talisman. And so the rogue threw it, and the boat appeared and like crashed through the hallway. So we had to crawl like under it to get out. So this is big wooden boat, and I think that's perfect because there's this place is infested okay. with gremlins. Um, Burning it down will work. Um, first of all. Did the rogue know what the talisman did? No. He just threw it and hoped it would work. <laughs> well, he didn't know what it was going to do. He thought it was, you know, he, he knew it was magic, but he didn't know what type. Why does this sound familiar? Are you attacking the darkness? <laughs> because he's a rogue? Magic missile. Yeah. Yes. No, no, our, our, our mage ha ha doesn't use magic missile when he's supposed to. He just, he just tries oh, mage hand on everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm lifting with mage hand. No. That's a, that's a more creative approach. Now, when when the, the DM says no, you're supposed to say, "Come, let's do it maximized mid 
or, or empowered. And then the DM gives you a strange look and says, Empowered? No chance? That's usually when the, the black no, dragon calls. <laughs> no, that's when rocks fall, you die. Yeah. Probably. You, you trip and fall on your sword <laughs> and stuff like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think our rogue's really too lucky now. He has a bunch of equipment because one of our car- one of our players wanted to create a new character, mm-hmm. and so he's sort of this. Oh, don't, don't don't bother rescuing me, guys. Just leave me there on the road. So we left his dead body there on the road, and then the rogue went back and looted him. You got a mutual? The rogue, yeah. <laughs> you can tell I played the game a lot. Yeah. Well, the, the best part is the rogue and, and my character, which is a druid, I have the same alignment, so we actually get along pretty well in most things, including in game discussing about making drops. That's scary. <laughs> I should know. I thought it. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, what? I must miss it. Was this on you? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's it called? It's called... It is called. Oh, Did you guys oh, spend oh, an oh, hour oh. yelling at me for about what an idiot I was for using Git and GitHub on Thursday night in the bar? Well, yes, I usually loathe okay. GitHub. Okay. Just I'm checking. I want more yeah, contributions on this. Um, so I'm doing I like the Git. Uh, GitHub. I, some people, a lot of people like Git. It seems more people that like Git don't like GitHub just because of, of its previous histories. Previous, current histories. Yeah, I, I currently you know can't get to it. Oh, I that's just... why. <laughs> I, I want to write a framework of, of things that know all almost all of the click through pages and just do it automatically. All of what? A thing that, like, using Mechanize that knows how to get through those click-through pages oh, for Wi-Fi. Oh, right, right, yeah. So it is Games or Tabletop RPG Combat. Just so what? Gets through those click-through pages? Oh, not, not guess with click pages. Uh, it, just, yeah. it just helps with, uh, with getting above those and that sort of thing. Well, no, I was talking about, uh, when you, so every time you're on a hotel Wi-Fi or a Canary Bread Wi-Fi or whatever, yeah, and it has a click-through page that you really oh, just have to say, sure. I agree to give yeah. you my firstborn child for letting you use your precious internet. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to have precious, it automated. Precious. Oh, yeah, I was tempted, but I might be here long enough. <laughs> yeah, here is the um, GitHub account, okay. if you want to go. Yes. Yeah, well, RPG well, Combat. Yes. I'll probably call that mine. I might, depending upon a think of ideas, create other modules in the games to a RPG namespace. But currently, writing combats is the most obvious application of Pro Code. And especially in FSA, because a combat really is just one state after another after another, when you think about it. One thing that would also be useful is, is a, a non sucky character sheet manager. Mm. Especially when it was like you could use on a tablet. One sec. As soon as it loads. Yeah. Oh, you're here. Yeah, I have an HD transformer. Oh, yeah, the transformer. Cool. And I also have an HD touchpad that I got for like 100 bucks. So, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I got it from both there. Hello. Hello. This is um the cargo sheet set that I'm currently going to make my player use next game. Uh, is it? But it's still paper, right? Uh, this is online, actually. Oh, it's online. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's it? Is it Flash or HTML5? Um, yeah. But it, it's and it's persistent, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It works on my Mac. So it works on your Mac. That's yes. I haven't tried it on the iPad yet, though. I will. I need to because I want to make sure it works on the tablet. Because if it works on the tablet, tablet, then it's not flash, which means it will not kill my battery. <clears throat> All right. So, any other questions, comments, boos, hisses, tomatoes? No, no. I missed the first part of your of your talk, but it seemed pretty good. Yes. Um, please bug me later if you want to know more. I, I will actually probably. Good. 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 Thank you.